This is a landslip that occurred in Storm Desmond um, and it's still moving now um, and now the 10th of, of January and here the, the water that's, that's coming at the top that actually caused the landslip um, I'm using that to explore how we can change the flow in the river, how we can move it from one side to the other and prevent erosion of the banks. Um, so we're really just using this as an experimental area, which is really nice to have at this stage. This section here I put cross stream groins. So here the direction of flow is coming down here, coming down this way. Um, so again the water comes in here and it goes out through the stones and gets pushed out through the stones so it digs this area deeper. When I first put them in the water was coming round this corner so it's, this stone is important. So what happens in this corner seems to be critical to make it go across. If the stones are also put from that angle into, into that angle it seems to increase the process. So the, the angle of the stone also looks critical. This is another area here. You can see you can see how this bit's dug out here. Um, so again, it's the waters come across here through these gaps, and so the, this part is being dug out. If that stone wasn't there, I think that would have been a lot deeper. So we'll take that out for next time. So here's three groins across the stream. Um, what's happened with them is they've silted up. They've been digging out behind, they've silted up behind the stones and moved the stream across. This is an interesting little groin made out of, of stakes, pieces of wood behind. So this leaks the water through underneath. So the water comes in at the back of the back of the stakes and then it comes back through the stakes this way. And then it, what it appears to have done is dug quite a bit deeper on the downstream side of the stakes. And this is a little stake down and here the idea is the water comes here, it gets pushed by the stakes back across this way and it builds up sediment behind. Um, so it digs out this part here a little bit deeper. On this section I've just tried with two groins across the stream. So the water flow is coming this direction. Here the water comes in behind these three stones and it gets pushed through. So it digs out this lower part here. Um, it seems to be important to protect this area here because if you don't do that the water goes along here and around the top. Um, so this one and then so this is bringing the water here it's coming through this way pushing it this way and then this one here the idea was that this one pushes it back again this way. This is a form that Christine Sindela from Austria is using and here the flow is coming downstream so it's like an inverted funnel the funnel faces upstream and with this one the water some water comes through the middle but most of it comes around here and then it pushes through the gaps between the stones and put, it was making a, a big hole here and digging this deeper but it's not so wide at the bottom that the angle is a lot less and this one it hasn't dug out as much so that's an interesting one and then next to it I've got a, a funnel coming downstream um, which is very like the, the work that Ottman Gro Grober is working with in Austria and, he's, and this speeds up dramatically the water flow here um, and it's also sedimented on that side and sedimented on this side um, so the idea of this is a good is to deepen the channel in the middle and then eventually it builds up the banks um, so it's a really good area, good thing to do instead of dredging it's a good alternative to keep the 
the river deep. It also, when it's coming down, the, the water goes in a vortex, um, so it digs out the, the base in that way. This is a little funnel facing downstream, so the, the water's coming in at the wide end and it's coming out at the bottom end, and I've also added three stones to make it more like a Y. So what was happening when I first put these in was the water comes into the top of the, the Y, it gets concentrated into the narrower part and goes a lot faster. And then I put the three stones at the end because they divert the, the water. Start, so it comes in here, goes along here, gets faster and faster here, and then these three stones across make it, the water shed this way and they push the force of the water that way um, and here also the, the water's come around the end and dug out the end. This is a, another downstream funnel um, so this is again water's coming from this direction coming down through the, here um, so it's speeding up the water and here it's dug this area a little bit deeper and then I put in another cross vein here, so that's pulled it back to this side. So it's interesting, this, this Y shape looks like an interesting possibility. But if we take the Y shape out, so I've taken those three stones out, you can see that the speed of the water increases along at that point. This is a little, a mini check dam. Um, using timber stakes and then putting timber across them. So this is very similar to the work they've been using in Pickering in North Yorkshire and also Michael Kravic in Slovakia has been using this technique. Um, in Slovakia they put in thousands of, of check dams, leaky check dams made out of timber um, and made a, a very big difference to the, the runoff and protecting a, a lot of land. Here are another two mini check dams um, where you can see the silt has built up overnight um, so it fills in behind the check dam but the water is still flowing over. Um, so here it's quite a high step check dam and the water is dropping into the pool making the pool deeper and it flows on the sediment catches and it drops over the next check dam um, what we haven't done here is put another, there is like a mini check down here and a mini one below that and a mini one below that. So what we're talking about here is lots of series, series of check downs as we go down the stream um, to slow the flow. And it also tends to catch some sediment, um, so it's a way of stopping the sediment getting into the, the river. One of the things with the check downs is that they need to be lower in the centre of the dam and also always leak. So here we've got a series of step dams, of check dams that go down one after the other. And the bottom of one check dam is level with the top of the next check dam. If we go use our ideas and take these into the river, I'm um, looking here we find one a series of rocks here, um, which is a vein, and that's pulling the water away from the bank. Um, very successful. Another area here, these are the rocks, you can see they're changing the direction of the water in the river. Um, here's an, an area like a groin that's been facing upstream, and this has caused the sedimentation behind it, um, collecting the gravel in the background. Um, so again, what we've been looking at is happening in the river. Here we've got some larger rocks in amongst the big gravel, um, and this is, has acted like a groin and collected the gravel bank behind it. Another area in the river, here's an area where the, it's like a funnel running down the river um, and the river has collected gravel to one side of it and the other side of it. Um, and then we move to this area, here we've got a, a line of stones which comes down from the bank and out and this rather than pulling the water away from the bank it's pulling the water into the bank and then you can see the effect of this downstream where it's washed away the ford and then the alder along the bank is another way of protecting the bank um, so these alder trees have built up 
the seeds of the alder tree float and they spread themselves along the bank. Um, so this gives us some idea of how we can protect the river, protect the bank, so we can use in-stream training with rocks and use trees along the bank for very successful river restoration. So how can we use this information? The main thing is that we can work with the river, the forces of the river. Um, so if we have an erosion problem where the bank's eroding, we can use in-stream in training of the river to take the river away from the bank and stop it eroding more. Or if we've got a, an area that needs dredging, we can put in a, an area where the, the river gets deeper, just using the flow of the river. Um, or we can use the, the older trees that, that their seeds fall on the river bank to protect them. So rather than spending a lot of money on very expensive armouring of the, the banks, we can do it all in the centre of the river. The other thing that we can use it for is for really looking at the way that we observe what's happening in the rivers. So if we can find an area where there's been erosion, just look at where the rocks are in the river, see what's caused it, see what the function is. If we see a, a pile of rocks on the river bank or um, silt that's been collected in a particular area, why is that being collected? So use your observation skills and then hopefully we'll get more work of this done in, in Britain.